taken a sabbatical and are travelling around the world with no plan and a small budget. We worked and saved hard for this so we're trying to make our money go as far as possible while still having meaningful experiences. We may be middle aged but that doesn't mean we're past it so join us as we go to new countries, eat new foods and enjoy life as much as possible. If we can do it, you can. to leave at 11.27 the clock bang on 11.27 you do not want to be late for these trains from Kyoto. It's a beautiful sunny day 
and we are trying to find the Imperial Villa. How are we doing? Getting there. <laughs> Come with us. <laughs> we found the Royal Imperial Villa. We oh. went to the gate and and apparently you can't go in unless you go on a guided tour, which is fine. So we'll have about 45 minutes. Yeah. And then I had to fill out a form to give him my details. I had to show ID. Just luckily, I had my driving license. I didn't bring my passport. So luckily, I had the driving license to prove my ID. And then we need to pay a thousand yen each to get in. And then I got to show my ID again when we get in. Yeah, we haven't paid anything yet, but we've had to give all of our ID, well, all of your ID, just to get permission to go in to buy a ticket. And they want to know my age, your age. Yeah. And then once we go back for the tour, the tour is all in Japanese. How, how is your Japanese? It's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> nearly, nearly fluent. <laughs> but it's just that everywhere you go, you need to but they want your age, they want ID. Like when we booked into the, into the um, hotel, it was where have you come from? Where are you going to? What's your age? And it's, oh, well, there's nothing to hide, but it's just unusual that they want to know so much information about you. So a useful tip is take your ID with you because we didn't know that you needed to prove who you were. <laughs> to get on a guided tour to go around the, what is it? Uh, the Imperial Villa. It's a, yeah, sure. a villa and gardens. Mm. I mean, to be fair, we didn't even know we needed to book to go into a garden. Yeah. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How was that for you? It was an hour, wasn't it? It wasn't an hour, exactly one hour. It was exactly one hour, <laughs> as promised. Very interesting, very scenic, nice place to come and visit. Yeah, it's very, very, very pretty. However, I thought we were going to a garden where we could sit and mooch and relax for a, a few hours and just take in the scenery. Nope. No. Very regimented. Um, we had a guide um, who was speaking in Japanese, but you had an English audio yeah. as well. And there was a backup security guy wandering around behind you to make sure you weren't doing anything <laughs> untoward. He was a member <laughs> of the Kyoto Imperial Guard. Who is he? Yes. 
So no stepping out of line. No stepping out of line. No taking photos where you shouldn't be taking photos. No stepping off the path. Yeah. It feels like a school trip, doesn't it? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so we've now got a few extra hours to kill because, well, that only took exactly one hour. Well, that's good in a way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go and find something else to do. We've just been to a tennis club to try and get Alan a hitting partner and we were walking off to the station to get our rail cards and we could hear yelling. So we're going to go and take a look. It sounds like football chanting. Just in case you weren't convinced that we make it up as we go along, <laughs> there's your proof. We were literally walking past, well not even walking past the stadium, walking along the road, heard the crowd noise and we just walked in, didn't we? Yeah, it's a university game so there's no ticket to buy apparently. We just walked in, didn't we? Yeah. Watched the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Which was quite good to see. And I think we've learnt more from coming to just watch here, just bunking in, about Japanese people than we have at any of the other places we've been to. It was strange. <laughs> it was <laughs> Because I have played Saturday League football, Sunday League football, and it's the first time I've ever seen two teams at the end of the match all line up and bow to the referee and the referee assistant and then both teams separately lined up and bowed to their supporters and then they switched and then both teams lined up and bowed to the opponent supporters um, but you most mean... of the matches that I played ended up with a punch up <laughs> <laughs> so this is a different level of politeness and it's just very strange. <laughs> but in England you shake hands. Yes, you do just you do shake hands. You shake somebody warmly by the throat <laughs> <laughs> on occasions. But, you know, it's, it's just a different level of... Politeness. Politeness and respect. Yeah. Uh, so Which I'm, I'm quite enjoying. Yeah. Uh, so it was well worth us just... Following our noses yeah. and doing this instead of going off to see a shrine. It's a bit different. Yeah. But it's good to see. And it's nice to see, you know, the youngsters all behaving nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's nice. Yeah. Very nice. And again, this is why we have no plan so that we can do things like this. <laughs>